Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the New Orleans Saints. With that, let's get over to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with the call from New Orleans. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And coach, we are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. The kicker for the Saints, Will Lutz, has it teed up. And here we go from New Orleans. This is fielded at the goal line. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They're led onto the field by the former Cal Bear on the number one overall pick in 2016, Jared Goff. There's a toughness about Jared Goff that maybe he doesn't get enough credit for. His freshman year at Cal, team went 1-11. His rookie year with the Rams, he was 0-7 as a starter undaunted in either case and has come back each and every time to flash the ability that made him the number one overall pick in the draft when he came out of Cal. On first and ten, gone. He gets it to Cooks. Right, he'll be dropped at the 30. The shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. They just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. From the gun, here's gone. They got him in. It's Woods. Goff to Woods as the Rams move the chains. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, it's Gurley. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. From the 50, it's gone. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 
First down, L.A. Golf finding Higby. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside yeah, as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the end routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. Play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 36. <laughs> Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Football going back over to the New Orleans Saints uh, and a team this year, Charles, that really took off after that week one loss. For me, it all came together week nine. You think back to that game when they beat the Rams, knocked off their undefeated streak to start the regular season. So now, are the Saints really Super Bowl winning contenders? I mean, do you put them in that category? Oh, I certainly do. And I think people were wondering how they would respond this season after what happened to end last season, the Minneapolis Miracle where they ended up giving up the touchdown pass in the last play of the game in the playoffs. And when it started losing at home to Tampa Bay, many wondered if their psyche had really been affected, but they've regrouped since then. The defense is really playing well. And then there's always Drew Brees to Mike Thomas. And that has worked very well for them. Well, since you mentioned Michael Thomas, and we talked about that win over the Rams, <laughs> never forget going to get the flip phone, Mr. Michael Thomas channeling his inner Joe Horn from back in the day. Breeze to throw on second down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. That good for 19 and a first down. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said right down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. First opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got it first and goal at the seven. Ready. Ready. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Here we go. 
The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. It'll go as no gain on the play. And now they're looking at a third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it. But I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. To throw his breeze. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Now the Los Angeles Rams, they continue to be a great story this season, a solid, solid team. That wonderful start, although they did lose week nine, obviously, to New Orleans, so the 72 Dolphins celebrated again. Yeah, they got a chance to hug it out and still be the last team to go undefeated in modern football. 17 and 0 that team was, but let's face it, no one shedding any tears for the Rams after that loss to New Orleans. They still have weapons galore on offense, a stout defensive front led by Aaron Donald, leading their division. They're aiming for the playoffs, and as all their moves in the offseason and during the season, picking up Dante Fowler Jr. to rush the passer, they're shooting for the Super Bowl. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to bring up a third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Here's Johnny Hecker now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Fielded at about the 28. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you. A huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Ready. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot. Excellent coverage. Didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. again from the 38 on second and 10. Ready. 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 On 
second down, Ingram. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now Breeze on third down. He throws, and he hits the slant route to Thomas. Quick slant there, gets him the first down, six yards on the play. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Ready. You ready? This is Ingram on first and ten. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camaro. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. That was a good run. Probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. There's Breeze. Over the middle complete. That's Carr. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Hands to Ingram. Had a good move, but only able to work it to the 20-yard line. And Dominican Sue makes the tackle. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. So each quarterback with an interception here in what was a mistake-filled first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They'll run it with Kamara. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Now they'll throw with Breeze. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Samson Obukum not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. From the gun, it's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me. I was. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say we live we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Rams.
Mahomes offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? Turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn it into first downs and hopefully points. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at their own 22. Now gone. It's caught left side by Cooks. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running around and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Here's Goff now on second down. And that's complete to Cooks. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. across the 50 and into Saints territory. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves them with a second and three. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And it's third and short. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Back to throw, golf. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a first down throw, gone. They got a man over the middle, it's Woods. And he's gonna get this down near the 30 yard line. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. 
You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. So first and 10 now from the 30. C.J. Anderson of the game. He gets it here. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down, Anderson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Show that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They'll try the air now with Gaul. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of 3. And they're going to face a third down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. It cost himself some yardage there. Throwing on third, gone. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And here's Lewis. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. 
Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe> bash. <laughs> I don't know about toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super tough. <laughs> Breeze now on first down. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive. Good for 15 and a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Ready. Ready. On the counter, Ingram. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Ready. You ready? On second down, here's Breeze. Caught by the tight end, Watson. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And that's caught by Smith. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. To throw, it's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll make it second down. Now, Breeze again. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas, and it's third down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Everyone's got both ready. You ready? Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Looking again for Thomas. This time complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. 
These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. On first down, gone. That's into the hands of Reynolds. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. A shotgun snap for goal. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Woods. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop him with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. We are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Golf on first down. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A very solid gain of 27. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. Well, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you get the second half to play.
So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and ten. And we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. So we have reached halftime here with not much scoring between these two teams. 6-6 six, six our score. even through one half of football as we get back underway in quarter number three. The return man is Hill. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Ready. They start the second half with Kamara. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Breeze now. And he will find a man here as Thomas comes open. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Saints on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This time it's third and three. Shotgun now for Breeze. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. Ready. We're waiting. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. throw on second down looking right sideline but it's incomplete 
But pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Third down, Mark Ingram. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And we will remain tied here in this third quarter. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. come the Rams they'll have it first here to begin the third quarter their defense did its job yielded no points now it's the offense's turn and how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys hey if you can shut them down get it back for our offense we can roll and they played out perfectly now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points and break this tie two sides to every coin this is the bad side of missing the 58 yarder now they start at the 48 time to establish the run game here Gurley takes to midfield but no further just a yard there tough first half for him unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing but with a guy like him you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. From the 50, it's gone. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he's got this down to the 35. The 15 yards through the air and a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Goff now, 12 of 15, throwing the ball. 80% so far, and it's first and 10. A play fake to Gurley, now gone. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Second and ten, Goff again. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. So that one a hold right Still guard. Second down. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Out of the gun. Gone. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Rams on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and forever. Go off throwing again. 
And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll go down at the 28. They do get 18, but even that won't be quite enough. It's fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And Zerline's kick is good. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. All nine points for him coming via the field goal, and this last one puts him out in front. All the field goals are great, but you know I'm going to get pessimistic here, right? Because you've got to score touchdowns to win games in the NFL. I just wonder if all these field goals, great now, or if they'll come back and haunt them later on. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And here's Lewis. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10, right at the 30. Bree's now to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Hey, 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 we got three. Hey, you waiting? Three shots! A 10th carry here for Mark Ingram. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. From the gun, it's Breeze. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. Now Breeze on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Carr. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. now 
Six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Breeze leaves this one with Camara. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Back to the ground, this time with Ingram. And he'll get this down only to the 18. On the stop was Aaron Donald. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try to chip someone at the second level. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints Foster up front. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still third down. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now. Third and long. Bree's going to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Lutz with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. First and ten, gone. And Cooks has it over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Oh, no. 
To throw is gone. Wide open receiver complete. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 71 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. From the gun, here's gone. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Brandon Cooks, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams are in for six. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just hadn't been able to punch it in until that point. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. Zerline connects on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. So as you see the numbers, a very uncharacteristic start, but he's been more characteristic as of late. And usually we're seeing a very good start out of him because, let's face it, he's one of the best out there. But when he does have a start, as we just saw, would you call it uncharacteristic? You know mentally he's not that worried about it. He knows how good he is and figures he's going to get back on the beam real fast. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports back now here live in new orleans it's been a very hotly contested game to this point just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter
Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Ready. You're waiting. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 ready, thus far. Ready. Here it's third and three. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. Oh, and they had him stopped short of the first, but a penalty marker down. And that looked like a clear face mask to me. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. Now down. your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. On first and ten, here's Breeze. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Breeze. He dumps it down to Ingram. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll be third down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still, a lot of guys to account for. The Saints on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This time they face a third and two. Now a handoff to Ingram. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. Breeze now on first down. incomplete. Thomas the intended target and now it's second down. So not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Once again they'll come up on the 26 yard line second and 10. Ready. You're waiting. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. False start, offense. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Ready, 
To throw is Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Carr. That one goes for 24 yards. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Ready. 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 A tenth carry for Kamara. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Throwing now is Breeze. This will be caught at about the five. It's a loss of two, now third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Ready. Ready. Breeze now on third and goal. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? And that's his kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. <laughs> Fighting down. He's got daylight. The 30, the 20. And he takes it all the way, but there is laundry on the field. A flag is down, and I think this one's coming back. I agree. Illegal block in the back. Return team. So that will push him back. And now we know why he had a little extra space to run, don't we? An illegal block in the back, that penalty will move them back. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. They run, it's Gurley, and not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. 
I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Rams on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They start the drive on the ground. Camaro. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Here we go. Third and one. Gut check time on both sides. So the false start will back them up five. Full start, offense. And that'll set them back five. Well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Now Breeze toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. 75 yards receiving for him now. It's a first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Ready. Ready. On first down, Breeze. And he'll let it fly in the direction again. And incomplete. Crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Second down, Kamara. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. 
Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. There's Breeze. And that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Graff will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he powers his way up past the 30. Demario Davis there on the stop. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's Goff now on second down. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. Now it's Goff. Fighting to stay upright. And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now Breeze. And Watson has it right side. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Breeze. He goes underneath to Ingram. And give him 14 yards that time and a flat shut of downs. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good. Solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. 
Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Breeze to throw. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he'll take this one down to the 36. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Ingram again, and he'll be taken down at the 34. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. third down that's Ingram and able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down just a yard on the run there and that's going to bring us to a fourth down what an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. They'll spot it at the 40. It's a 50-yard kick for the win. And he got it. He splits the uprights from 50 yards out. And Bourbon Street, it'll be alive tonight. The Saints have won it. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. I'll be heading to the hotel. Charles, he's off to Bourbon Street. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, we say 